Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Mac Break Studio. I'm Steve Martin. Today I want to talk to you about creating hand-drawn graphics. The graphics that look like they're sketched on a piece of paper, or on a notepad. Well, you can do this on your iOS device, either using an iPad or an iPhone. I particularly like to use one from Adobe on my iPad called Adobe Sketch. It's also available on the iPhone, but I like uh, the wider surface area of the iPad. Plus, I like to use the pencil, although you don't need to use the pencil. So what I want to do is walk you through the app. And by the way, this app is free, and I'm sure there's some other ones out there, and you're welcome to comment about those in the comment section, but I like this one because it's simple to use. Let's take a look at what I created in Final Cut. So what can you create with Adobe Sketch? Well, let me show you a few examples. Here's a little arrow I created for a hiking trail. Here's a symbol I created for a PSA to keep kids from vaping. And here's a checkbox I created for helping people to remember to check their air while underwater. And I even created an upper third, which you can also create a lower third. And I've got one more clip here uh, of my wife and I, Jill, and I'm gonna create a nice Valentine's graphic for her since, well, we're very close to Valentine's Day. So before I show you how to use the app, I wanted to show you where it is on the App Store. Here it is, it's Adobe Photoshop Sketch. It's free, available for the iPad and iPhone. I'm gonna go ahead and tap open. And that will bring us to this project window. And you can see here I have a number of projects I've already created. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project by tapping the plus button in the lower right. And you have all these different formats available. There's one for 1920 by 1080 HD. I'll tap that one. And I get a blank canvas. Over on the right, you have layers. You have a background layer and a sketch layer. So right off the bat, you have two separate layers. It's very Photoshop-like in that you work with layers. I'll come back to the background layer in a moment. But the layer you want to draw on is the one that has the blue box around it, the sketch layer. I'm going to go ahead and create a nice heart graphic. So I'm going to choose one of the brushes. So you just pick a brush from the left side of the tool palette. So I'm going to choose this brush, tap it, and it's going to bring up the tools. If I want to change the color, I tap the color button, and then I choose a color from the palette here. If I want to change a size, I press and hold on this little top circle and then drag right or left. To make, a, to make my brush stroke wider or narrower. And I can also control the amount of ink by pressing and holding the flow button and then dragging. Right. So what I wanna do is use this brush and just draw out a heart. You know what? I don't like that heart very much. I'm not sure I like that brush stroke. So I'm gonna tap the undo button on the top and I'm gonna go back to the brushes and I'm going to use this brush instead. Let's see, I'm gonna go back and choose a color, increase the amount of flow, and increase the size. Let's see how that looks. Eh, let's try it one more time. Ah, much better. It's not perfect, but hey, it's a hand-drawn graphic. Now, I wanna have the quintessential arrow piercing the heart, a la Cupid, but I wanna do that on a separate layer. So I'm gonna tap the plus button, I'm gonna add a sketch layer, and that's the one that's selected. I'm gonna go back to the brush tool, and I'm gonna use the same brush, but I'm gonna change the color, and I'm gonna change the size. And then I'm gonna draw the arrow. Of course, we need some feathers on the arrow. And I didn't like those feathers. Let's try that again. One, whoop. It's a nice thing is that you can always undo, and I'm, by the way, I'm doing this with my finger. I'm not even using a pencil. I also want to add one more thing to the first layer, so I'm going to tap the heart layer, and I'm going to go back and change the color, and I need to make a little line to where the arrow is piercing the heart. All right, so you see now I have two layers. I have the heart layer, which I can tap, double tap, and turn it on and off, and I have the sketch layer, which I can double tap and turn on and off. Now the background is white, and I want the background to be transparent. We don't really need it, so I'm going to double tap it and turn off the background layer, and you can see everything around the heart and what I've drawn is transparent. 
So now it's time to send this graphic over to my MacBook Pro. So I'm going to tap the share button at the top and there's some options here. If you own and use Photoshop, you notice there's an option under Send To called Creative Cloud Files as PSD. If you use this option, all of the layers that I create here in Sketch will be available in Photoshop that I can edit. However, if I don't have Photoshop, I could still send this image, I just won't be able to send it with layers. So I'm going to assume you don't have Photoshop and let's just send an image. So I tap that and I have AirDrop set up. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the picture of myself and I get a message that the graphic has come across. I'm going to go ahead and click open and there is my graphic. Now, where did the Mac OS place it? Well, if I right click on here, it puts it right in the downloads folder. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, close these windows because they're kind of in the way. And we go back to the finder. So I'm going to grab this graphic with the transparency. I'm going to just drop it right into the timeline. And notice all of the transparency information came across with the graphic. Because the Sketch app is pressure sensitive, some places the ink is a little thicker and some places it's a little thinner. And you can see transparency in the areas where I didn't apply as much pressure on that particular stroke. So you see how simple that is. You just sketch out your graphic and then send it over to your Mac via AirDrop and then drop it right in the Final Cut Pro timeline. That's great for single image files if you don't have Photoshop. But what if you have Photoshop and you want to preserve the layers. Let me show you that example because that's where this app gets really cool. All right, so I'm back in Sketch and you can see I've created a number of graphics already by the project panel here. And I'm gonna create a new graphic by tapping the plus button. I'm gonna choose HD screen. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the background layer ahead of time so I don't have to do that later. So I'm, I know I'm working on a transparent background. I'm gonna create a checkbox. So I'm going to tap this brush over here. I think I'll leave the box the default orange, but I'll increase the size of the stroke and maybe the flow. And then I'll just draw a box. So there's layer one. Tap to add another layer. And I'm going to add the check mark. Tap color. I'll go ahead and choose this nice lime green and create a check mark. So I have two layers here, one with the box and one with the layer, and the background layer is turned off. Now I'm going to share my artwork. Tap the share button, but this time instead of image, I'm going to tap creative cloud files as PSD. The app automatically connects to Adobe Creative Cloud and uploads your artwork. You will need a Creative Cloud subscription in order to get the layered Photoshop document onto your computer. So up at the top of the menu bar, I'm going to click the Creative Cloud icon and notice I have assets selected and files. I'll go over here and click open folder. The finder takes me right to where that PSD file lives on my hard drive. So it says project sketch one dot PSD. So what I'm going to do is grab this Photoshop document and drop it onto this previous one, release my mouse and choose replace from start. Because this is an editable Photoshop document, I can access the layers by double clicking on the clip. It will open up in the timeline and you can see my background layer, my checkbox layer, and my check layer. The background layer doesn't need to be there, so I'm going to select it and press V. So there's my transparency. When I jump back to the main project, there's my checkbox but it's too big. I'm going to press shift T and I'm going to scale the checkbox down and move it over here. Now, when I play this back, the checkbox just pops on the screen. We're going to fix that by, by editing the Photoshop document. So double clicking, bring us back in here and I'm going to select the sketch layer, the beginning of it and press command T to add a dissolve. So, the checkbox will fade up. Now I want the check mark to fade up, so I'm gonna maybe have it come in here, press Command T, and I'll trim that up a little bit. Let's see how that looks. I'll play that so the checkbox comes on, and then the check mark. So I'm editing these layers inside the Photoshop clip. 
going back out to the timeline. And now let's see how it looks. Check box, check mark, and then the text. So as you can see, you can create just about any type of graphic that you can imagine using either pencil or your finger. In fact, you can head your iPad over to your five-year-old and let them go to town and let them design the graphics for you. They'll have a lot of fun and you'll get some graphics that you won't find anywhere else. I also want to remind everyone that this week we're taking a week off from our live show, but Mark and I will be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. Mountain Central Time to take your questions. We really appreciate all of the positive feedback we've gotten from that live show, and we look forward to answering your questions next week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.